are back and this is page build number four. We're going to do two of these. I've done the first one so you can see what it is we're going to build and then we'll build it. So this will probably, um, we can do the, the string tie or we can do magnets. You can do whatever you want, but we're going to do closures kind of in the next step. We're going to get all these built and then we're going to go back and talk about closures. But anyway, so we've got a little flap here that opens up and we've got a large flap here that opens up and then we have a waterfall. Now I do have it drop down from the top. You can continue it up all the way up to the top. You could probably get another three on here. I have seven pages and this just is going to leave a room for some nice decoration up here and then we will decorate these. But um, again, if you want to go all the way up to the top, go for it. I just think that seven of these is probably enough because that's going to give you 14 pictures on the flaps alone. Picture underneath, plus you've got the front and back of this. It's a lot of pictures on one page. So, but then we're having flap, 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 and flap. Lots and lots of space for pictures. And then this will come up and this will close up. Now we do have a quarter of an inch gusset on both sides because this gets pretty thick. This gets pretty thick. All right, so let's build this, guys. Now, what you're going to need is you're going to need, and this I got out of my scraps. Um, it was three and a half wide, seven and a half. I mean three and a half tall, seven and a half wide, so seven and a half by three and a half. You want to score on the three and a half inch side. You're going to score at a half inch and three quarters of an inch. So I have that sheet already cut out right here. And we're going to put it into our scoreboard and we're going to score a half inch. And we're going to score at three quarters of an inch and that will give you a quarter inch gusset. Now, when you go to fold these, you are only going to fold the very first one. Don't fold the second one yet. Uh, and you will understand why in a little while. So only fold the first one. Now the, you, and you only need one of those. This is seven and a half wide by eight and a quarter long. On the bottom side, you want to score at a half inch and three quarters of an inch. So let me show you that. And before I go any further, let me give centimeters. Um, 19 or 18. It's, it's all right, guys, let's see. It is 18.9, okay? So 18.9, and I can write that on here. 18.9 by 8.6. And like I said, I got this out of my scraps, okay? And it was already cut at the seven and a half, so it was perfect. Um, okay, and we're only going to score the first one on that. Now I have this sheet, and I'm just making sure that I'm going to score on the proper side. So on the eight and a quarter side, the eight and a quarter side is across your part here, and your seven and a half side is here. Okay, and we're going to score at a half inch. Oops, I jumped. I have it. This is thick paper. Sometimes you just got to slow down and get that three quarters of an inch. Sorry that looks a little messy, but it will not show. So when you go to, to fold this one, you are only going to fold on that half inch score line. So that very first score line you get to is the only one you're going to fold right now. And again, you will know. Did I tell you centimeters on this one? So it's 18.9. 
And let me write centimeters down so people don't see that and get confused. Like me. <laughs> what do you mean? 8.6. 8. What the heck is that? <laughs> okay. And this one, get it straight. This one is 20.8. Yeah. 20.8 centimeters. We only need one of these. And then you're going to score. Um, so. Let's see where. You're going to score at 1.2 and then at 1.9, okay? Score at 1.2 and 1.9 on this having the, the longer side, the 20.8 across on your piece. All right, hopefully I'm doing this correctly. Nobody has said anything, so I think I am. Um, those of you that are that do watch me that do centimeters, if there is anybody, <laughs> if you guys can let me know if I'm doing it correctly, that would be super, super duper. Okay, so we have these two pieces. So first we're going to attach these to my mat that goes onto my base page, okay? So, I've got my top marked. Because they're so close in size, I wanna make sure I always have that marked. And of course, these need to make sure that they are exactly the same width, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're going to Put our fold line, just drop this paper right down inside of it and get it even, lay it down, fold it over. Now you will get a little bit of push up from when you fold it over, which is fine. And then just make sure you didn't lose your line up, that your paper is still lined up. And then let's just, oh, now this one, you can take a little off the edge and it just hides part of your build that you, you know you oh look at how many layers is on there you know, people just don't see it because you're you're uh you know everything's going to get covered up with paper all right and then just fold this over and the reason why we are not folding over our next one until after we do this is it just makes it easier to not have another fold to to deal with okay give that a good burnish let's bring it back over actually before you burnish it down flip it over and make sure you still are lined up you know, that it didn't move or something, and then burnish it down. Now, we're going to go ahead. Oh, and always open it up. Make sure you don't have any glue lines. But now we're going to go ahead and we're going to fold this other piece down. We want to make sure that when we fold this second fold line, score line, that we are still lining up. And then we're going to burnish that down. Okay. Now take your top piece put it just like this i'm just i'm just getting that down in there and i'm making sure that it's even on both sides i'm laying it down when i fold the flap you'll see it want to move forward a little bit which is perfect but make sure that you didn't lose and I did just a little bit, that it is still lined up perfectly with your paper. And you wanna make sure that both sides are lined up, and they are. So now you pinched it. I'm holding down so that when I let go of this, it doesn't move. I'm gonna open it up 
and I am going to whoops get my glue on there forgot to cut so I'll get a little bit of glue on my scissors and then just flip it over and do a good burnish so you get the glue all over flip it back get my little pieces okay and then we're going to come back and fold down our second score line again making sure that you're lining up very nicely there we go and now you're just going to push these little fellows around and now you have a nice quarter of an inch in between if you can see that I can get this to hold on to this you got a nice quarter of an inch there opening all right now let's get ready for our waterfall to the waterfall all right so you are going to need seven now if you want to put more on and fill it all the way up to the top I think you might get let's see as we have a half inch And what do I have here? One, two. you could get two more on there if you wanted to. I'm fine with having seven. Alrighty. So we're going to take, I have these. <laughs> that would probably be good to tell you. Um, so these are four and a half by six or in centimeters fifteen point two this is inches this is centimeters by eleven point three okay and you will need seven or nine or anywhere in between there. Or if you don't want to put seven, all of seven on there, you, you can do whichever way you want to, guys, okay? Um, but if you're going to do it the way I'm doing it with me, I'm using seven of them. So you get those cut. And then what we're going to do, and I guess I'll do it this way just because it's going to be, we're going to score it. But instead of just going a half an inch and whatever's left is whatever's left, just in case there were some little error in the measurements, we're going to go over to the four inches and score. Okay, so we know that from our score line down to the end, we have four inches. So we'll be able to put our four by six pictures on here. Okay. Um, it's just a, a trick that I learned a long time ago is um, get get the measurement you want and then score. Now some things it doesn't matter especially if you're going to cut the other end to fit what you want but this is already cut and I normally do it the other way where I score and then cut but on these we're cutting and then scoring so you go to your four inch mark because we want these to all be four inches long alrighty so we're just going to score all seven of these at one time so we have that done and we can go on to the next step oh two more two more we only have two more girls and guys 
if I have any guys. Occasionally I get a guy. But mostly my demographics are people about my age. And ladies. So that's who I talk to. <laughs> So now we're going to open this up, okay? And we can actually flip this back a little bit if we want to. Let me flip it at the first score line and get that underneath it. So you're just looking at the base mat, okay? Now. We're going to take our ruler and we're going to measure over. I'm going to take uh, a quarter inch. Now this is where this kind of ruler really comes in handy. A see-through ruler that you can measure out this way or you can measure out this way three quarters of an inch because each one of these dark solid lines is three quarters of an inch. But I'd have to put it over here on the white to be able to do that because black on black on black because of the black line, I can't do it. So I can, however, do it this way. And I take my three quarter inch line and I just butt it up against the edge there because it's not quite three quarters of an inch, but we're gonna be close. So I'm gonna make a line there and I'm going to do the same thing here and just butt that three quarters of an inch right on the edge of the paper and make a line and do it again on this side. Now this is really just to help you out getting your um, waterfall nice and straight. There are multiple ways of doing waterfalls and so as long as you are getting that first one straight, did I move that? That just looks like I moved it and I did because it did not look straight. And actually part of that underneath is my page from underneath. So let's get this, okay. Now this won't be seen and I'm just going to line these up and give myself a little line. Doesn't have to go all the way up because our waterfall is not going to go all the way up. Okay. And then we're going to take our very first one. Let's fold it. Let's see, I think I'm done having to measure with the centimeters. Okay, so we've got our first one. Now the first one is the one you really, really have to pay attention to um, because all of them will build off of this. Uh, some people will start at the top, but because I wanted to leave the top, now if you want to start at the top and leave the bottom part empty, you can do that. I chose to start at the bottom and move up and leave after the seven, leave that part empty. So, you oh, this does need to go all the way down. It didn't need to go all the way up, but it does need to go all the way down so I can see this first one. Let's see, am I, am I on it? Yes, I am. There we go. Okay. So now, let me get you guys a little closer. And I'm going to put it this way so you can see. Okay. So I am going to stay away from my edge, which is not going to be easy for you to see. Help. It'll help out a little bit. Um, I'm, but I'm staying away from my edge. Uh, not even an eighth of an inch, but, you know, right around there. Right around an eighth of an inch. Stay away from your edge. And then I am putting the edge of my paper evenly 
on both sides of the line that I'm see if you can see this okay can you see the line there and then my edge my paper and the line there and the edge of my paper so they're equal kind of hold on uh, let's see there we go okay so I've got them equal but you see what I'm talking about anyway and then what I'm going to do since I have this exactly where I want it I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat so I'm going to put my pencil right there and then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to bring that pencil mark out up too high out past past these two lines so then when I put this down I can put I can put this paper right on the line and I can oh, right on the line and I can see that it's right on the line because I have extended the line out past these lines okay super easy way to get yourself straight all right perfect now let me bring you back out again so you can see everything that I'm doing okay now these you do not cut because we're not building on top of these we're butting up to them but not building and if you cut them then when you go to cover them it's a lot more difficult so do not cut the edges off of these so there's a time to do it when you're building layer upon layer upon layer and you're trying to save you know some of the thickness um, and then other times when you don't want to do it because it's going to make the paper that you're going to cover it with n not uh, not work as well so basically if it goes around the outside of your album you're going to cut the edges most of the time if it's going on top of your page you don't cut it because that way you can cover it easier okay all right now figure out why my glue's not coming out okay so we're going to put some glue down and I'm going to pay attention to both sides excuse me if my head gets in the way but I want to make sure now don't push down on your glue until you have this where you want it because as soon as you especially if you got the art glitter glue as soon as you burnish it down it's pretty much stuck make sure that this looks even across the bottom here and it does but this does not so let me okay I'm pulling it up I didn't get it just do it nice and slowly Let's try this again they it's just paper guys if you mess it up just get another piece of paper no worries no pressure nothing okay so let's try this again get it on the line even and then check out what it looks like here and it looks good now I'm gonna burnish it down there we go flip it up and you want to make sure that all your edges and ends and even right up to your score line gets a nice bit of glue on there okay now all this other stuff will be covered so don't worry about it okay you could erase the line that comes out because you might see a little I mean a titch of that
but it is so worth it. It's it's worth a, just an added little step of erasing it. Okay, so now we're going to take our second one. Make sure that these are lining up properly so that everything's nice and straight. Once you fold it over, open it back up. It's folded over this way, and then I'm opening it back up, and I'm putting glue on this side. So this is the top or face-up side of the paper. Now I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to come down, and I'm going to match up. Don't push down on it. Just match it up. Push down enough just to fold it over. Make sure you're lined up evenly. And then the second test is open it up this way and make sure you're lined up evenly. And it's wonderful. So we're going to give it a quick burnish. Open it up and make sure that you're kind of nice and neat and that everything's all right down here. Okay, everything looks good, and it opens up this way, it looks good. Okay, all right, and that is what you do for the rest of these. Make sure you're get lining these up so they're nice and straight, because as you can tell, if they're not straight, it is going to make a difference. Now, if you have to pull it away from the other one a little bit, uh, you can do it. It's not that big a deal. So I've got this open. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to line it up. I don't want to go underneath. I just want to kind of butt it right up to it. But don't go underneath this one. if Because your, your glue is still wet. So if you push to go underneath, you're probably going to go underneath. Close it. Make sure you're working it. Okay, open it up this way, and it looks good. All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to give that a nice burnish. Open it up, make sure you're happy with all the little corners and stuff. And we'll go to the next one. And that's as easy as it is. I mean, it's getting it lined up so that pre-work that you're doing is what's making you get get it right. I remember the first time that I did a waterfall, it came out horrible. Uh, I mean, one thing, I was pushing it up underneath the other one. I was, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, I, I don't I actually remember what I was doing wrong, but they were horrible. And I hated them. And I watched more and more people do them. And I'm like, I hate you. No, I didn't say that. I was like, thank you for showing me, even though I can't get it. Okay, and again, don't push it down hard. Just push it down enough so it's kind of stuck there. Make sure that we're working both opened and closed. And that when you close it again, that it's still lining up. And give it a nice burnish. Open up. And make sure you're happy with the inside. Because like at this point, you're stuck. It's down. And like this one, there is just every little bit of a kind of a crack right there. It's fine. It, it will all get covered and blend in. And you're not going to have, uh, you know, you're not going to really see that. Okay. My thumb is better today, but it is still just right in here, just killing me. And working with this thicker paper is not helping it. But I am enduring. <laughs> and, and actually, you know, to get to craft, it's fine. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you guys. Okay. Um... We're just going to line this one up again. Remember not to push it underneath, but butt it up. Make sure you get it nice and straight. You see how much time I'm doing 
how much effort I'm putting into making sure I have this nice and straight. This is what you need to do. It's not a race. This is a journey of making beautiful things. So just enjoy it. Commune with it. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, and I wasn't making fun of people that, that, that meditate. I probably should go to some place and help them teach me to shut my mind off because I, I don't sleep very well because my mind never shuts off. So, yeah. Yeah, it's always going, always thinking of stuff. I just have to write it down because I don't remember it. So I keep a pad and pencil right by my bed if I think of something. Oh my gosh, that would be so cute to do as a page. I got to get up and write it down. Because sometimes that's when I do my best work <laughs> is when I'm laying in bed not being able to sleep. Okay. So we opened it up, we opened that up, everything's fine. There are two here that I have hanging off the edge ever so slightly, but this side is absolutely spot on. So I will probably do a little something with that, but I will show you whatever I do. I, I mean, it, it lines up all the way and then just right at the end it has just a little flare i don't know maybe it is hanging yeah those two um was probably the last one that i did because i did two at a time um so i got four of them and then uh i had one that i had cut extra from when i did my my practice one, my setup one, and then I did two more, and I must not have cut those exactly the same, but this side's perfect. So, what I might do, it's just really not that big a deal. I, I think when we get paper, it's, it's not going to show that much, and for me to yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. It's fine. Okay, and then this is our last one. Open it back up. Put some glue on it. These are going to be so fun to embellish with all of our goodies. Yes. And I know, I know, I see my favorite thing is designing the pages. I, I'm a, I don't know. I just, I just like designing the pages. I like figuring out different ways of putting these pages together. And that's something that's kind of cohesive, that kind of works um, with everything else that you don't have like, you know, I've seen some people do some beautiful pages, but the pages didn't all like go together. Um, in in my, I don't know. It was like, uh, I don't know. I I don't know. It was beautiful though. I mean, she did a great job. I'm not mentioning any names because, um, and and it was the only book I really saw her do that in. But uh, it was just like every page. One page was, and, it, and some of it was probably the paper line too, but some of it was like frou-frou frilly, and then others was like almost steampunky. And it would have been all right if she would have made the frou-frou frilly and steampunk together on some of the pages, but she would do, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, but the decoration part is, I mean, I love decorating the papers too, but when I first started, I would do this 
and then I would never decorate them because I always felt like I was gonna screw it up. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that one. I don't like that one. But we are done, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this flap and this flap. We are done. Hallelujah. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for another page in our little mini series on how to build mini albums. And again, it's just pieces of paper with flaps on them. And then you glue them down strategically. That's all any of these pages are. So it's it may look difficult, but it's not. These are all just pages with flips with flaps, flips and flaps, you know? Where'd my other one go? Oh, right there. <laughs> ah, ah. So we have a simple tri pocket. We've got our doors with a nice pocket in here and our closure. And then we've got, and this is a kind of a waterfall as well. So lots of opportunity for pictures. And we will probably, we will be using our scraps up. So don't be looking at that scrap pile going, oh my gosh, look how many scraps we have. Because we will be using them up. And then we've got a true, normal, ordinary, but wonderful waterfall in an envelope page. All right, guys, we are so close. We've got one more page for our tubes or base pages and then we'll have one once we put the book all together then we will do the inside front and back covers which will be the same build maybe I don't know we might play around with that we might not I'm trying to keep these um, very straightforward and also keep in mind decorating because I don't want anybody to be overwhelmed with so much um, again, if you're working with the calendar stuff, you really don't have a lot, a huge amount of choice. So it's, it's not going to be overwhelming. If you're working with just a regular, you know, maybe a different graphic 45 album, I mean, a collection or something like that. Um, sometimes the quantity of, of choices you have can can overwhelm you and so that is one reason that I had chose uh, this place in time um, papers because you really are limited with your choices I mean you have a page you have this page I'll turn it this way and it's just it's got this little jobby here on this corner and this little jobby here on this corner and then the back is exactly the same color and oh it's got a swirl and then a little or swirl okay it's got a nice border on both sides same border and then you get this page with all your cut aparts and then on the back you get choices of colors okay I mean so that's it now some of the months are a little prettier like February actually has some of the little flowers and such to it but the back is always the same it's the swirl and the littler swirl and then you have your cut aparts and the papers that go along are on the back so you're either going to get to use this or get to use a cut apart. So you have to figure out which cut aparts you're going to want. So your, your, your choices are, like I said, just limited. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We will see you next time. Give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet. Subscribe and hit the little bell so you get a notification every time I load one of these puppies out. Okay, guys. I'll talk to you later. Love you. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Wear your mask. <laughs> and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.